violence began after my first child was born. Mark Pearson isn't usually a shoulder to cry on. Being dragged downstairs with my hair, I was made to sit in a freezing cold bath for hours for coming in late. He's a multi-millionaire living undercover in one of the most violent towns in Britain. I've been attacked on, I think it's three occasions, physically attacked. While looking for people he can help, he'll have his nerves tested to the limit. When you hand a knife to somebody, pass it this way, because if you hand it like that, what are they going to hold on to? He'll share people's pain. My brother was stabbed here. I had a 10 inch blade and went through his stomach. He was just screaming, Liam, please come back. Don't leave us. And revisit the darkest moments of his childhood. In my life, I haven't been that low for a long time. At the end of his stay, he'll give away over £100,000 of his own money. Say what? Amazing to see that people are putting in so much time and effort, you know, into change, into something they passionately believe in. Every single person has got such a deep, touching story. It's shocking to think it happens on such a big scale. Three years ago, Mark Pearson dreamed of setting up a global internet company. If you go back to the sales team and they take away the commission, will it be a better discount? It has been so overwhelmingly successful. I, I still pinch myself sometimes of what is achieved. Stand out. Everyone I meet knows I work too hard. First one in the office, last one out. But it's just me. I, I've got a lot of ambition and I want to achieve more. He's just had his 30th birthday and is worth over £60 million. The money has been amazing. I live in a Cottonwood lifestyle now. Things have done for me. I've got house staff, I've got cleaners and gardeners. Aaron normally looks after Drinks. the wet stuff and I yeah. look after the, all the food and everything else and the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Having originally trained as a chef, Mark enjoys entertaining at home with his boyfriend, Aaron. And then we're going to do the cutlery. Yes. I met Aaron 10 months ago now. It was online, because, I mean, I'm a busy boy and I kind of never stop. And it had to be online, because we're an online business. I'm an online geek. Hi, <laughs> how are you? And how's work going? Was that you busy? Busy as usual, manic. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Cheers. 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 He might be living the party lifestyle now, but when he was growing up in Liverpool, life wasn't so easy. The breakup of my mum and dad happened when I was pretty young. I remember we spent a lot of time with my nan because my mum was always at work. After my mum and dad split up, we ended up in a kind of refuge and it wasn't a very nice place. I was hanging around with the wrong kind of people. I was actually on, just on the streets. When I look back now, it, it's kind of scary, the things I got up to. Remember, no labels, no nice things. For the next eight days, Mark's going to live undercover in one of Britain's roughest neighbourhoods. I really think it'll be an eye-opener for me because I live in this lifestyle which goes at 100 miles an hour. Very little chance to see the real world. I think it, it might open his eyes up to new things and it might make him realise how much he really should give, considering how much you have. Really help out some people and see what difference it can make. I can't wear this, it's small. Yeah, you wear small t-shirts, you'll be fine. I think you'll be okay. You'll survive, you'll be fine. I've kind of been a bit apprehensive, because I just don't, don't know what to expect. As long as it's not too bad. I think the hardest thing will be lose my security and lose the people around me, not knowing the situation I'm in. Mark is on his way to Nottingham, where crime rates are twice the national average. It, it could be, I don't know, it could be dangerous. Mark will look for and be introduced to people who may need his help whilst living in Radford, one of the poorest parts of the city. You've moved in? No, I've not even moved in yet. You're telling me to well, go? Man, Manny out is the worst place. Really? Yeah, this is the main 
drug place. Whatever what else have I got to watch out for? People rubbing you, crackheads, people, you know, you have to be careful, don't walk around at night on your own, maybe. Make sure you're friends. The worst place in Nottingham. Shocking. There seems to be characters on every corner, it's a little bit concerning. For the next eight days, he'll live in a rented house on the equivalent of job seekers' allowance. It's very musty, it just smells damp. Feels very secure. <laughs> Not really. And it looks like the door's been kicked in previously. Suppose it's okay. It's not as bad as downstairs. Mark wants to get to know his new neighbourhood and heads for the nearest internet cafe. I've just come to the area and I'm wondering what's the area like? Drug sellers. Drug sellers? Yeah. Was that like outside, close? Sometimes outside, sometimes they come inside and you can't talk to them because they are very violent. Yeah, they have robbed me two times. Robbed you? Yeah, robbery, yeah. What way? You come in, stole the money? They took the money. Took almost they used a weapon? A knife? Yeah, yeah, they got a knife, yeah. I feel very apprehensive and concerned because knives are probably the scariest thing. It's so dark at the back, and it seems like they've been broken into before through the back because they've put cages up everywhere. You don't know who's going to visit or what time of night, so I think I'm certainly going to make sure this is well locked. There we go. I'm not reading about this place, no, I'm, I'm in this place. And the, the, the key words of the day were drug dealers, crime, knife crime, gun crime. Can it get any worse than that? Secret millionaire Mark Pearson's living undercover in Nottingham, which has some of the highest statistics for violent crime of any city in Britain. I had a decent night's sleep considering. It's been a bit of a shock to the system. My Cottonmore world's been taken away from me, and I see the reality of it. I see things that I don't normally see. I probably read about occasionally or see on the news. And now I'm in the thick of it. Keen to get started on his mission to find people he can help, Mark returns to his local internet cafe. I found a website called Done With It. It's a campaign about gun crime and knives. It was run by a guy called Clayton. I think I'd really like to meet him and see what he's up to and what he's about. Mark's arranged to meet Clayton at a local youth group. He's told him he's an unemployed chef who's interested in working with young people. Hi, Clayton. How you doing? Mark, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Myfield from No Gun Organisation. Very good. Thanks for arranging to meet me today. Yeah, it's brilliant. Really I'm looking good. forward to having you here, actually, working with us today. Yeah, I want you to open my eyes, see what's going on in the area. Listen, guns, knives destroy lives, that's a fact. Knife crime is very serious, and you guys are all at risk of being stabbed or even gunned down in the streets. That's a fact. Guns, knives destroy lives. Clayton Byfield is a one-man anti-knife crime campaign who spends his free time doing workshops at schools and youth centres around town. I'm going to show the effect of what uh, knife crime has. 16-year-old Kurt Erner died of a stab wound in March 2007. That's a typical knife wound. What about that? They're about to take his intestines out. Oh, Every hour in the UK, six people are seriously wounded in knife-related incidents. You look around the room and any one of them could be the future victim. Oh, this doing? is Mark. Mark. He's a visitor right? today. Yeah? Thank you, yes. yeah right. He's thinking right. in the future to work with young people. Yeah? So he'd like to try and get involved in, you know... Get out of it while you can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Let's go meet some more of the groups out here. You right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, you yeah. Right. What you see is what we do as as an organ organisation is try and steer you guys away from 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 getting involved Shanky. in that culture. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we're trying to. That's what we're trying. That's the mindset we're trying to change. Yeah. You know that, don't you? Tell me what you've experienced. I've been uh, arrested with offensive weapons before. You've had a weapon. Do you still carry weapons? No, not anymore. What made you change? There's a police station called Brightwell, and I was in there for like. Hours and I couldn't handle so it. Yeah. Yeah. Clayton's come up with a plan to put Mark's chefing skills to good use. So, we've witnessed what knives can do, yeah? Damaging people, killing people. This thing, what we're looking at right here, has cost so many people dearly, yeah? If we use it properly, it's actually a pleasure. So, I'm going to hand you over to Mark, who's the, who's, who's the talented one at uh, cooking. What we're going to start with, right, we're going to uh, start with all the veg. We want to cut it down so it's all a similar size. Guys, are you listening? Are you listening? When you hand a knife to somebody, pass it this way. Because if you hand it like that, what are they going to hold on to? What's that? I've been very apprehensive and on edge. Even just the mention of knives. So you hold your fingers like this? Because that stops you cutting the end. If you do this, you're going you're to cut your fingers off. So it's not high like this, it's little chop. So you're controlling the knife, OK? I'm mixing with the people who are affected and the people who are potentially carrying these. You know, and I, even though I'm trying to dig in and find out information, uh, see who I can potentially help or what I can do, could it go wrong? Could it, could it backfire on me? It's a lovely looking dish. It just show, I've seen today some talent which I didn't realise was there. So you should be immensely proud of yourselves, but more importantly, I want you to just appreciate what Mark has done today. He's actually showed you a skill what you can take with you at home, right? By coming here, how does it help change you? Well, how did it put you in the direction? Because here you want to be a chef, right? Yeah, I'm ambitious to own my own restaurant yeah. in a few years' time. Yeah? Uh, Gordon Ramsay. And Tell me about what you did before you came here. I was just stood on that street corners causing trouble. Put yourself back in that situation now. Do you yeah. think you would be worse now? Do you think you would have gone more involved? I mean, if I, I wasn't here, yeah, it would have. I would have been. What do you think you'd be doing now? Uh, probably been stabbed or been, like, died or something. It's worrying, isn't it? Do you yeah. know anyone that's been affected by that? Yeah, I have friends that have been stabbed at, but. Really? Yeah, I know people that have been stabbed and shot. What do you reckon then? In terms of the day, how do you think it's gone? I think it's really good. I'm kind yes. of a big eye opener. Really big a eye massive opener. Massive eye opener. Well, yeah. Well. It went a lot better than expected. I was really uh, kind of nervous and apprehensive about it all. Just, just to be around them kids because they didn't know the reaction. I think what you've learned today, with your qualities, it's sort of what you should really consider taking forward as possibly volunteering at first. Nice belonging kitchen is not people is, is a real good theme for a, a chef. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, and I'll support you with that. Thank you yeah? very much. Excellent. Cheers. Clayton, he seems a good guy, He's, he seems to be trying to make a change. And the good thing is the kids listen. It's hard to get their attention and, and he seems to connect with them and they, they seem to like him and appreciate him because he's from round here and he's witnessed it and he's, they're not just preaching. I mean, uh, as a kid or a teenager, you don't want to be preached to. So this is different, it, it's showing them the harsh shock of reality, which I think is the way forward and the way it's going to work. <laughs>